welcome back to my channel thank you so much for clicking on this video now if you're new consider hitting that subscribe button and giving this video a like it truly does help the channel out today's video is going to be different compared to the other videos that i've done but we're going to be doing a book versus movie comparison so we are going to be talking major spoilers here all right let's go on with this video because it's going to be a long one we're going to be talking about the shining that's right you guys i saw the shining i honestly thought i have seen this movie before some of you are like stephanie can't believe you've never seen this i can't believe i've never seen this i have thought all these years like all these years that i have seen this movie but then when i started listening to the book because the shining book was this month's like audible read for us because i'm like um in an audible book club with my sisters and my friend and as i was getting like pretty early on in that book i'm just like hmm none of this sounds familiar to me like none of it i'm like okay we're gonna have to watch this movie i was gonna wait till after i finished listening to the book to watch the movie but then i'm like no 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 no, don't do that because i never ever ever liked the movie after i finished the book so obviously the book is always 10 times better but i was just like well i'm pretty sure i've seen it but i wasn't 100 percent sure you know it's kind of one of those things this movie is so iconic and so many people talk about it you know it's referenced it's parodied in so many other you know movies and shows and from all that in my mind it brought fear into it and it brought no you've seen this movie it's just so crazy how your mind works right and how you and it kind of goes well with the movie seeing that we're kind of dealing with mental stuff here anywho you guys let's get back to this comparison i just i thought i had seen the damn movie but i had not i'm so glad i did because like we, we got some thoughts you guys we we uh we got some thoughts on it this is probably gonna be my most disliked video honestly it really really is because i'm about to talk shit about the movie um also if you are into like these book movie comparisons let me know i was gonna be doing a book comparison with um a time to kill because uh, i also have thoughts on that but somehow i never got to that to that video but if you are if you are into these type of videos as well let me know and i will be more than happy to uh make more of these for you give the video a like if that's something that you are interested in so the shining is a 1977 horror novel by american arthur stephen keen it is keen's third published novel and first hardback bestseller a success firmly established keen as a permanent arthur in the a hard genre. The setting and characters are influenced by Keane's personal experience, including both his visit to the Stanley Hotel in 1974 and his struggle with alcoholism. And the novel was adapted into a 1980 film of the same name. The book was followed by a sequel, Doctor Sleep, published in 2013, which was adapted into a film of the same name as well. Now, I have not seen Doctor Sleep yet. I will at some point. The book, if you're new, I'm blind, you guys. That's why the phone is like basically in my face. So the book is 447 pages long. And if you're like an avid, like audible listener like myself, um, you are looking at 15 hours and... 50 minutes of listening time with of that book and trust me you guys it goes by like so quickly like it's a good book you guys it's a really good book the book and the movie both have pretty much a scene synopsis we are following the torrance family it does uh, mostly center the life of jack torrance or john torrance if we're talking about the book that's one of the the changes that they decided to make um now he does in both the book and the movie um suffer or is a recovering alcoholic and also is somebody who is having kind of like writer's block and just you know he's a writer regardless in both um book and movie and both in the book and the movie he does uh take on the position of being the caretaker for the fictional hotel of the overlook in the colorado like rockies um he does take his family there as well in the book the, no no not in the book in the book it's very clear why he is in the position that he's in and we'll get to that a little bit later well maybe i should do it now no 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 hopefully i don't forget but in the book it's very clear why he's in the position because he was a former teacher and what happened to get him into being now a care caretaker for the hotel and in the movie i don't really remember them ever really mentioning mean why he has to do a caretaker position I think it was just like this is just what he's 
going to do his son Danny who has the shiny and that's what um his gift and that's what the book is you know about even though in the movie they don't really talk about it too much it's very briefly like in a small little section talk then of course you have your little um what's it called Toby Tony a little hand deal uh, we'll get to that also in the book it is very clear that he has these psychic abilities and then of course you know him feeling the dangers or the evils that surround the overlook hotel and also in both um they do eventually get stranded or they get you know locked up there in a winter storm which i mean technically it's not really like locked up because they knew that they were going to be up there stranded for like months on end jack he goes crazy in both and tries to murder his family. Okay, so that's the main, the, the, that's still the same. Now, I'm not gonna lie, the movie technically is really, really good. It's directed really nicely as well, and it looks really good, technically speaking. Um, but other than that, honestly, I don't like, I didn't like the movie. There's no, there's like no character development towards it. They're like literally, the character's totally different. Um, and I understand, and I understand that it's a book, and obviously there's like more to it, because again, there's like 15 hours compared to a movie that's just like two hours. I guess you can basically say that Stanley liked the concept of, of the book, but was like, you know what, I'm gonna put like my whole own little twist to it, and of course, every director's gonna do that when it's like an adaptation you know they're gonna make it their own right like i really wish they wouldn't make it their own if you're adapting the damn book do it like the book if you want to make something different make something different don't call it the same damn thing and talk about it's an adaptation no no okay okay we're, we're gonna get passionate here you guys we're really passionate okay let's go back we're comparing. I feel like I'm kind of going to a review there no 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 okay let me go back over there because i know i'm always all over the place and if you're new there's no structure here. No disrespect to everybody who like loves this movie, has this movie as their favorite movie, like most iconic, like horror masterpiece. Can do no wrong. It's reference like again in so many things. It's beloved by so many people. I'm just curious, like, have you read the book or listened to it? Again, if you're an avid list, uh, audible listener like myself, if you haven't, like, do it. And then get back to me i would be really curious to know how you now feel about the movie again this is my own personal opinion everybody has their own opinion everybody thinks differently about movies some of the minor uh differences that really don't affect the story overall but i'm still gonna mention them to you guys um and then we'll kind of go into a little bit further more mentioning of like big stuff that i'm just like dude that wasn't even in the book a spooky room in the movie actually has a different room number in the book it is room 217 but the management at the timber uh timber Timberline Lodge, sorry, um, as Kubrick, the director, to use a room number that doesn't exist, that's not there, because they were feared that once the movie came out, they were probably going to lose business on that room, well, not lose business on the room, but that people were not going to want to stay in that room, you know, because of the fear of, oh my god, like, room 217, which ultimately led to room 237. But ironically, um, the most requested room in that, um, in that lodge is room 217. Now, when it comes to Tony, Daddy's imaginary friend, yeah, we don't get this in the book. Uh, but it's okay, because this gives you a sense of Tony. And also when it comes to Red Rum, the way that it happened in the movie with him screaming it and like raining on the mirror and stuff, that didn't happen like that in the book either. That actually happened pretty early on in the movie and he was actually by himself. Now when it comes to some of like the bigger differences in the book, the Overlook Hotel is very much haunted and it's very clear that it's haunted. With even the damn like animals from the garden, what the hell are they called? The um temporaries or whatever that they come to life and i kind of get them not using that in the movie i mean i guess like these garden animals like are they really scary probably not i don't know i think they would be because if a damn animal is like turning its head and it's trying to come and attack you because they attack you guys but it's like a garden animal like maybe he could have still used something around the same concept like 
maybe like statues, gargoyles, or something like that. Now, all the supernatural forces that are happening within the hotel are, are actually what's driving Jack insane, or John, I guess, in the hints of the book. He comes into the hotel very much sane, very much even telling the manager that, you know what, I'm smart, I read, we know how to keep ourselves busy. It's very hard for smart people to go insane. So I, I think I'm gonna be good. And the book, I mean, not in the book, in the movie, they don't even mention that. Also, also, the manager from the hotel in the book was a freaking asshole. No one liked him, you guys. And in the movie, he was like the sweetest little thing. Like, I just remember thinking, like, when is he gonna be an asshole? Like, never. In the book, the time, it, it takes a while before we actually get to the winter time. Um, they do actually go into town and they, the whole doctor scene in the movie that happened early on, that doesn't happen um, at their house. That actually happens at the hotel. Well, when they're at the hotel, but they actually go as a family to the doctor to call, uh, to go have physicals and make sure they're like in tip top um, shape before they're like, up there stranded in the hotel so that all happens there um they actually go a lot they do a lot of stuff in the in the town beforehand even wendy and danny were uh debating on kind of staying down there before everything kind of gets shut down because they were already having bad feelings from the hotel now when it comes to the movie and jack going mad it does come from, of course from isolation it comes from his writer block it comes from anger it's coming from his own mind again that's just kind of triggered off from isolation you guys like this man cannot handle being isolated because in the movie he's not as smart like i i never got that sense of him or any of them really being smart compared to the book because again technically jack is a professor he was a teacher but i guess i'll get to that now before i forget because I, I'm, I bring it up again and i might as well um he is actually well he was a professor but he actually basically ended up beating the crap out of one of the kids who ended up slashing his tires. In the movie, the ghosts are basically just trying to reclaim Jack because he's like the reincarnation of, what's it called, a caretaker from like back in the day per that photo at the last in shot of the movie, which also was not part of the book. I like the slow going into sanity in not sanity insanity because in the book it actually happened more gradually and again in the movie it's like they got there and then like next thing you know we're somewhere and Nikki's just like looking like out there like dude like you went super quick jack in the book when he was introduced to us he was very much likable just somebody who's really struggling with alcoholism you know he lost his job he lost his career and like now they're struggling now he's having to come and do this caretaking job you know from somebody who has some sort of degree to now this because again anger alcohol and again in both the movie and the book um he is a writer they do focus more on the whole writing portion of it in the movie but also in the movie, they never really officially say what he's working on. In the book, we know what he's writing. Um, he was writing a play. But then he ended up switching it over to a story about the Overlook Hotel. Now in the book, his reasons from changing from doing this playwright to the history of the Overlook is due to a scrapbook that he actually ends up finding in the boiler room who was very nicely left there by the ghost of the hotel to kind of, again, bring him in and draw him in. Now in the movie, most of his time that he spent is in that room where he's writing, not doing his caretaker duties. Like, I don't think I ever saw him do anything. On the contrary, I saw Wendy, I think, checking the boiler in one scene, but I never saw him doing any caretaking work. Now in the book, he spends most of his time in the boiler room because the boiler room is a big thing in the movie. You have to make sure that it stays within certain gauges, otherwise the, the hotel is going to explode. Um, also in the book, he is doing his caretaker duty. The writing is done after all his duties are done, usually at nighttime. So the whole all work and no play makes Jack a dope boy that was written like thousand times and like all these pages, like ultimately that's what he was writing, is not part of the book. Let's let's forget about Jack for now. Let's go over to Wendy. Cause oh my god, Wendy. <laughs> In the movie, Wendy is so freaking annoying. Like literally annoying. Like 
if you do not leave this man who's like abusing you in the book also i totally let me go back to jack real quick in the not in the book in the movie jack is like this um it's machista he's um oh how do you say that in english he is and if i remember while i'm editing i will put that word here somewhere around the screen in the book wendy is a blonde and she's like the weakest person ever not know how to stand up for herself let's jack just run all over her she's crying all the time it looks like she's afraid to even look at jack i don't even talk to him because jack is literally triggered by everything i know i said it i was enough with jack but i just remember something else about him too also jack in the book seems to really care about his family like he loves his family he's trying to make this work out and everything loves danny but in the movie he, he does not seem to care for nobody he is annoyed by everybody. I remember when they were going into the Overlook and Danny's kind of coming to the front seat and Jack Nichols is kind of getting him like this, like, ugh, like, get away. It's almost like me with children. In the book, Wendy is smart. She knows how to stand up for herself. She don't take shit from nobody. Well, I mean, she still, like, gets abused, but she knows how to stand up for herself. I didn't give her a knife like she had it in the book. You guys, remember when she, like, hit him in the head or he fell no he, she hit him right with the with the bat girl guy whoever's watching this no my girl wendy in the book my girl wendy book stabs jack because again a stronger character i don't know what the heck stanley the writers were doing with this character again the character development in these movie is terrible you guys it's terrible this is why i don't like it and Wendy was one of my main issues. And the way that they also that you wrote uh, Jack, John, whatever, totally changed the way that he is supposed to be as well. I mean, made these characters so unlikable. So again, Wendy in the movie is submissive, is passive, is weak. She's brunette, whatever. Wendy in the book is a blonde. She is stronger. She's self-reliant. She's independent. And she knows that she has to step her damn husband she needs to because she's coming after her. Now off to Danny. In the movie, I mean he wasn't annoying but this boy in the movie, not in the movie, in the book is such a better, much better character, okay? He's still the same age, I can't remember how six, whatever, however old he is. But he is super, super smart. He has a big vocabulary, you guys. He knows how to use his words. In the movie, you hardly see him talking. He's just kind of like, oh, you know, he's doing his little Tony. He just seems like every other, like, six-year-old. Nothing special about him. Of course, in the movie, you don't, you know he has a shiny because it's mentioned there when he's talking to Dick, chef from the Overlook, before, you know, he leaves to Florida, who he also has a shiny. We're going to get to him in just a little bit. But that's about it. We don't really get too much from it, but it is a big thing in the book you know again originally the hotel well no the hotel wants daddy but they're gonna go through his dad to get to him and then when, when it comes to his shine in the book the parents know about it they're open about it i mean they're kind of afraid of it at first but then you know as the story progresses they're like oh the shine you know they'll bring it and they'll talk about the shine and everything like that it is it's the reason why it's called the shiny. Now when it comes to Dick, the chef, who also has to shine, not as powerful as Danny. Now in the book, he survives. Alright? He survives till the very end. Yes, he gets his ass beat. There's no axe also. Um, in the book, he has like this mallet deal for some game that they play. He like hits him in the jaw or something and like I think breaks his teeth or whatever. He passes out, but he does not die, you guys. He makes it to the end with the family. There's something there that apparently Stanley didn't like. They're probably like, Mr. Keen, you did something wrong. Now again, guys, this movie was made in the 80s, and Dick is a black character. I think y'all know where I'm going with this. I guess the director and the writers were like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Um... The black man survived. No, uh, uh, let's correct that. No. Um, stab with axe dies. That seems better for our time period. That's much better. Make sure he dies. Now, when he survived in the book, I remember I was doing my makeup and I'm like, ain't that some shit? <laughs> ain't 
they fucking killed them in the book. I mean, in the movie. So some of the iconic deals, again, like the twins, that's not part of the book. Uh, the Grady family is mentioned in the book. It is part of the book and like what happened there with the family but the girls are not twins there the bloody elevator scene also was not part of the book i honestly kept waiting for that to happen um in the book uh, but i guess it's a pretty cool scene in the oh it is a really cool scene in the movie the hedge maze is not part of the book again is the whole um garden the topiary topiary the garden animals stuff in the finale is different the outcome jack still does die in both versions but in the movie he dies with ice and in the book he dies with fire of course we had that iconic scene of him frozen there you know because he did not make it out of the maze um in the book he actually um is in the boiler room because you know things he was over there trying to be murderous and everything and it's like oh shit the boiler room i haven't even gone to go do what i need to do so the hotel doesn't blow up and well the hotel blows up before i do give you my last few like comparisons thought about the book movie if you haven't already go ahead and give this video a like or you can dislike it if you like seeing that i'm talking crap about possibly one of your favorite movies it's you interacting with it so i will appreciate it either way also consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already and don't forget to hit the notification bell now instead of a scene man kind of push into insanity as stephen king wrote him Jack Nicholson's character is already likely insane and he's trained desperately to stay sane while locked in the hotel for the winter. Uh, the book is a supernatural horror and the movie is like a psychological horror. The character development in the book obviously was like 100 times better because it was like no character development. You guys don't argue with me on that because there's no character development in the book. Not in the book, in the movie. There's none. He's just a crazy ass man going crazy. And Wendy's character and Danny's character, they did them wrong because they were way better characters in the book and they were done so dirty in this movie, you guys. So, I'm going to be giving the book a large popcorn because it was awesome. The movie's getting a small popcorn. It's, yeah, no, I'll, you know what, I'll give it a medium. Because technically, again, it's great. It's just the story. Uh, maybe it should be a small. No, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll be nice and I'll give it a medium. But I kind of want to give it a small. But I'll give it the medium, you guys. I will give it a medium because i know it's a very iconic it's very beloved technically again great movie it looks great it looks fantastic and it still pretty much holds up i was not scared by it i was not creeped out i was really just upset of the lack of character i'm just like the whole time i was watching i'm like oh people really like this again it was before i had even got into the book really so this was way before that and i'm just like I don't, I don't understand. Either who. If you've seen The Shining, read the book, listen to the book, let me know down below. What did you think about it? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Was it just not for you? What is your take on the character development within the movie? Alright guys, that's it for me today. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.